Hello. Hi, hi, it's Kieran here. Oh, hi there. How are you, Kieran? All right? Yeah, not bad. How are you, mate? Yeah, not not too bad. Uh, keeping okay. Sorry, were we due to speak at this time? or? Uh, yeah, you, you said on the text to call you at 11.15. Sorry, my fault. Yeah, I didn't write that in my diary, Kieran. Okay, yeah, I'm uh, just sorting myself out. Yeah. I'm with you. Sorry you, about that. Are you busy, or have you got a few moments? Yeah, I've got a, I've got a few moments certainly. Okay, good. Nice to meet you. Are you, are you local then? Are you in the big house area? No, or? no. I'm quite, I'm quite some way to the, I'm quite some way to the south of you. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I'm to the, I'm to the south of you. But um, I have tried calling the local Kingdom Hall, and they have a, a, a landline answer phone, and no one gets back to me. So, oh, I see. Yeah. Um, all right. So how so how did you get the number of hours then? Did you have you been to Brighouse or something? No, no. Find a meeting on jw.org. Ah, right. Oh, yeah. Of course, and the numbers on there. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, so whereabouts are you then? Uh, well, I'm quite some way to the south of you. I don't want right. to give up my home address due to data protection. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, sure. No sure. worries. No, it's just that I used to live in London, that's all. So um, I, I'm just interested if people live there. That's fine. No, no, no problem. No pressure. You don't have to tell me that. Okay. Um, so you've been going through the course yourself, have you? Do yes. you enjoy life? Yes, I found it very interesting. And I, I've been going through um, one, one, one chapter at a time. I've just got a couple of questions. But was wondering yeah, sure. if maybe we could just focus on one single chapter, not jump around and deal with lots of different chapters. Just one single thing, if that's all right. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Well, I, I thought if you had a few questions, I could jot them down and then um, just spend a few minutes, maybe now, on one of them. And if we had yes. time another time, we could move on to the others. Well, the resurrection is quite involved, so maybe chapter 15, the resurrection, we'd leave that for another time. Right, OK. Um, it says Jesus resurrected as a spirit, and I thought Jesus resurrected in the same body he died in. So that would leave chapter 13 uh, about <coughs> false religion can't get involved in politics. False religion gets involved in politics and warfare. That kind of troubled me a bit. Right, OK. It's page 55. It's the start of section 2. Lesson 13, paragraph 2. Shall I read it, or do you want to read it? Uh, no, go on, you can read it for us. False religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. The Bible says that false religion's sins have massed together clear up to heaven. For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the death of countless numbers of people. Some religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove they do not even know God, yet alone have the right to represent him. It seems to say, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, that false religion, if a religion gets involved in politics or warfare, then it's a false religion. Right. Um, am I right so, about that? So, so you're saying that it's a sign, a sign that religion is false, is no, that no. they get involved in warfare? No, no, I, I'm not. That's what I think your book is saying, not, not Right, me. okay, yeah, yeah, that's... So, uh, you feel that the paragraph is saying that um, if a religion gets involved in warfare, then it's a false religion. That's what I think your paragraph is saying, yes. Um, right. I found a parallel account in an Awake magazine. It's the 22nd of April, Awake 1993, page 6. And it calls churches that get involved in warfare pawns of Satan. Uh, it says, rather than encourage love for one's brother, the churches have supported and even promoted the killing of one's brother in war. Thus they have become pawns of Satan the devil, just as surely as, as were the religions of the ancient Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians and Romans. So it calls churches or religious groups that are involved in warfare pawns of Satan. Um, it's quite a sweeping statement, quite a strong statement. And do you feel that, according to the Bible, that it's acceptable to God for religions to become involved in war? Well, that's not really the issue. I mean, obviously, we'd want to look at the Bible and see what the Bible has to say. But it's sure. the fact that the Bible has in... Sorry, it's the fact that the Watchtower 
has had involvement in warfare and politics for a long time that concerns me. How can they say the other groups are false Christians because they're involved in warfare and politics when the Watchtower itself has been involved in warfare and politics for many, many years? Okay, so it sounds like this... Uh, let me just get this right, whether it's one of two issues. Um, is, is the issue you have that you disagree with the statement that religion should not get involved in war, or is the issue you have that you feel that Jehovah's Witnesses have become involved in war? It's, it's actually, it's warfare and politics that's mentioned in your okay. book. And yeah. I'm concerned so, about the fact that the Watchtower condemns other religious groups for getting involved with politics and warfare, but the Watchtower itself has been involved in politics and warfare for a long time. Okay, so can I just confirm uh, what your thoughts are, whether you feel that the scriptures do uh, show that religions should not get involved in warfare? What are your thoughts on the matter? Well, I'll talk about politics, which I think is a lot simpler. Um, Daniel was involved in politics in Babylon, and Joseph was involved in politics in Egypt. Um, they were godly men. And okay, even, and what about warfare? It, well, let, no, I haven't finished with politics. Okay. E even in the pages of the New Testament, we find a man called Erastus, who's mentioned mm -hmm. at the end of Romans 16. He's the treasurer of the city from which Paul wrote his uh, letter to the Romans. I don't know if that's Corinth or, or Ephesus, but it would be a major Roman city. And he holds high political office. He's, he's the treasurer of the city. Now, that's a high political office, and he's a Christian. So I think Christians can get involved in politics. Let me read it to you. Romans chapter 16, verse 23. Gaius, my host, and the host of the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the treasurer of the city, greets you, and Quartus, a brother. Um... So there's a Christian who's involved in politics and he's not a pawn of Satan. He, he, right, so he's you... a true Christian who's involved in politics. I think we need more genuine Christians involved in politics, not less. The trouble is many people, particularly in American politics, who get involved in politics claim to be Christian when they're clearly not. And there's a lot of godless people, wicked people, um, who who have no loyalty to Christ at all, but call themselves Christians just so they can get people's votes. Not not so much in this country, but in America. And right. I think I so, think we need more Christians being salt and light. The trouble is, when when people who call themselves Christians join political parties and get involved in politics, the problem is they're not salt and light at all. They're just corrupted like everybody else, with a few few exceptions, but most of them, you know. So you feel that scripturally it's acceptable for Christians to be involved in politics, yes. at least to some extent? To, to, uh, to some extent, yes. Romans 16.23 clearly has a Christian who is involved in politics and he's approved of in that right, function. Okay. And um, what about warfare? Do you feel similarly? Um, not really. I, I think most wars are fought for economic reasons, for issues of greed. Um, if there was a war, I doubt I, I'm t too old to fight now. I, I'm in my 60s, but um, I wouldn't want to get involved because I think they're they're fought for. Um, well, I think that the often with regard to many wars, uh, the governments lie to us. Um, however, I do think in rare situations we are allowed to defend ourselves. The Bible does permit us to defend ourselves. Jesus did tell his disciples to pick up a sword towards the end of his his ministry so for instance um if i take the case of nazi germany um if somebody wants to pick up jews or gypsies whole families men women children even babies and then put them on cattle trucks send them to poland and put them in a gas oven then i think that those people have the right to um defend themselves against that and I think that uh, that is a legitimate defense it, it, you know if someone wants to attack and hurt your wife and child as a Christian you're expected to try and defend that the problem is with most wars once governments get involved 
and I'm sure you're aware the politicians that we see aren't necessarily the people with the real power. There's people with real power behind the scenes, the money, the money people. Mm. And a lot of these money people want wars because they can make money out of them. So a lot of wars are not fought for moral reasons. They're just fought for financial reasons so that people can get rich. And I, I don't think that in such a situation the Bible would want me to get involved and kill another person just so that some some rich banker can get rich or some rich industrialist can get rich. So um, it seems like when it comes to warfare then, then we as witnesses have a similar understanding of the scriptures to you in the sense of uh, we both agree that Christians shouldn't support warfare and get involved in warfare but it is acceptable um, to act in self-defense. Would that be fair to say that? Not necessarily, no. My, my problem is that the Watchtower has been involved in warfare for a hundred years. Okay, so that's why I was trying to split the two uh, questions into two. It, first of all, what we both feel um, the scriptures say on the matter, and then whether you feel that witnesses have done that or not, that's another issue which we could address. Do well, you understand what I mean? My problem because is that the, the, the... Even even if in the past Jehovah's Witnesses have been involved in supporting war, yeah, that may or may not be the case, but whether that's the case or not, I just wanted to um, just get clear the what, what we as Witnesses say we feel the Scriptures uh, say about warfare you hold the same viewpoint, it seems. No, no, I, I don't. I don't think I, I, I do. The the watch right, time, okay. when Rutherford was about to be arrested in 1918, he wrote a couple of Watchtower articles promoting the purchase of the Liberty Bond, also known as the Liberty Loan, to support the American military in the First World War, and he did that purely to give himself a defence in court. This led to the Standfast movement. The Standfast movement were Bible students who left because they were standfast against the purchase of the Liberty Bond, also known as the Liberty Loan. This was basically right. money you loaned the American government, interest-free, to support the war effort. Now, Rutherford okay. wrote... Well, I mean, one of, the, one so, of the articles... Can I just give you the I reference? Can I just ask something? Can I just ask something before you go on? Because, like I say, we, we can talk about whether, in the past, the Bible students did or did not support war, yeah? But you've... you've um, You've, you've looked at the Enjoy Life course and it's stated our position on war now and I just want to know... You whether still you support agree warfare now. The Watchtower supports warfare now and politics. The Watchtower is involved now in, watch, in, in politics and warfare. Um, okay, I, and we, I wanted and we to discuss that later but as for what the Enjoy Life course about the scriptural stance of Christians on warfare. But, but the, it's irrelevant what the scriptural stance is because the Watchtower doesn't obey its own stance on warfare and politics. Well, that, that could be an issue that we can deal with. Well, it's not it could be an issue. Any religion that doesn't practice what it's preach, you'd be a fool to get involved with such a religion. Well, now, now, I don't know if you've ever heard of... There's a logical fallacy called the two quoque, where somebody... Um, denies an argument that somebody's made because they say, well, you do that yourself. And that may be true, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the argument is wrong or right. Right. The, and, the and issue I have is not with you. I'm not interested in you. I'm not interested in ordinary Jehovah's Witnesses who go to a kingdom hall and sit in a pew in a kingdom hall. I'm not interested. The problem I have is with the people who run the Watchtower Society the shareholders, the governing body, okay, because they so, don't they so don't sounds, practice sounds, they don't practice what Robert, they preach. Robert, Robert, it sounds like. Would you um, allow me to finish? Going, the, would you allow me to finish Robert, the sentence, please? Uh, yeah, you can finish the sentence. Yeah, in the Watchtower of the fifteenth of May, nineteen eighteen, page six thousand two hundred and fifty-seven of Zion's Watchtower, as it, as it was then called, Rutherford promoted the purchase of the Liberty Bond, also known as the Liberty Loan, to support the American military in the First World War. If there ever was a war that was fought for economic reasons, 
not for reasons of, of moral virtue, it was the First World War. And Jehovah's Witnesses threw in their lot because of Judge Rutherford with the American, okay. with the American military in the, in, the, in the First World War. Rutherford even prayed yeah. with Catholic yeah. priests okay, and so, Protestant clergymen so I, I, during a national just, day of prayer. Yeah, so I've allowed you to make that point, yeah, and it's an interesting point that you make, and I've allowed you to finish the sentence. But I just wanted to say, Robert, that it seems to me that the reason you've contacted us as witnesses is not really because you, uh, it's not really because of questions to do with the Enjoy Life course. It's because you've got criticisms of our organization and you wanted to air those, whereas I was under the impression that you wanted to understand what the scriptures actually say about um, about these matters. But, but the Watchtower doesn't that... obey what the scriptures say on this matter. They're, they're a money-making business. They're a money-making American corporation. Look, on, on JW, it says in your book, page 55, for centuries religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused yeah, or can approved... I just stop you there, Robert? Because you I, keep stopping me all I, the time. I can't on. finish the sentence. Well, I allowed you to finish the sentence. Before. You allow. I'm you keep like saying them. you allow me, as 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 if you're my master, or, or am I your slave? Would you please have an intelligent dialogue with me, adult to adult? Now, look. It says some religious leaders in, in enjoy a lavish lifestyle, and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove they do not even know God yet alone have the right to represent him. Now, on JW Broadcasting, I watched a children's cartoon called Caleb and Sophia. Have you heard of it? Robert, I'd just like to clarify something, please, before we go on. I, I just want to ask you a question. Yeah? Um, is the reason you've contacted me because you want to criticise the organisation of no. Jehovah's Witnesses? No, I want to understand why you don't practise what you say in this book. You say in this book that religious leaders who have a lavish lifestyle cannot support Jehovah God if they're getting their followers to pay for it. Now, on the Caleb and Sophia video, there's one where the little girl wants an ice cream. And she's told to give her money uh, to the um, worldwide work of the Watchtower Society at the back of the Kingdom Hall by putting the coin into a box. So she dreams of having an ice cream but she ends up giving the money to JW.org. Now, the people who are promoting this on JW.org, like Samuel Hurd, are wearing solid gold Rolex Submariner watches. Samuel Hurd's Submariner Rolex watch cost $20,800. Stephen Lett had a cheaper Rolex watch, and by the way, St Stephen Lett also wore a Masonic pinky ring. A little pinky ring on his little finger, blue stone with a square and compass on it. The guy's a Freemason. Now, why are Mr. Hurd and Mr. Lett asking, continually asking for money on JW.org? They're just like the other TV preachers. They're no different. They ask for money all the time, whilst at the same time they're wearing Rolex, solid gold Rolex watches. I mean, that's hypocrisy. Have you asked them? Have you written to them to ask them? I'm asking you. Why are you asking me, Robert? Well, you're a Jehovah's Witness elder. Do something about it. This is this is the well, difference between a religion that uh, impacts the world for, for the better and religions that don't. Jesus told a parable about the Good Samaritan. There was a man who was injured. And two religious leaders came and they looked at him okay, and they walked Robert, on by on Robert, the other side Robert. of the road. They did nothing. Just like Jehovah's Witnesses who are told when Robert, they see something wrong, leave it in Jehovah's hands. And uh, it's difficult to get a word in. Uh, but I'd just like to say that thank you for that information. And you've not really told me anything I've not heard before. So I don't think this conversation is going to help either one of us. Mm. If you've got any of those issues that you've said, you're very free to write. I to have the, done that. Um, I've written to I've written to Chelmsford, and they told me they wrote back, and they said go to JW.org and do some research. That's the right, answer okay. that every Jehovah's Witness is trained to give. You don't. You're like the bad Samaritan. When you see somebody injured on right, the side I'm of the road, you do nothing. Now, Robert, you do nothing. Uh, 
your agenda. So, you're told um, to leave all errors in Jehovah's hands. Again. Real men Thank do you, something Robert. about it. I'm going to leave the call now. Bye. Oh, you're not going to run away. Don't run away. He's run away. Brickhouse. Brickhouse Congregation in Dudley.